So, Newsom says the state can't afford paying out extra money for unemployment. Maybe he should have thought about that before putting millions of people out of work again with his sudden reclosures. Join me now from Dallas, Texas, financial expert and co-founder and chief strategist of GDP Advisors, Seth Denson. Seth, thanks for joining us. Definitely good to be with you. Uh, Seth, do you feel bad for uh, Governor Newsom? Uh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, listen, here you've got California, which collects more taxable revenue than any other state in the union, over $180 billion a year. Uh, and they're the ones crying foul here that they can't, they don't have enough money. Uh, while, meanwhile, many other states haven't made this same claim. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. This is politics as usual, but maybe California doesn't have a shortage of funding problem. Maybe it has a spending problem that they need to address. Yeah, it's really interesting to see the Democrats uh, criticizing President Trump over his executive orders and is it ideal for the president to have to make the executive orders here in this situation because Congress couldn't come up with the deal and we were already a week past August and Americans were wondering what was going to happen next were they going to be able to afford their rent and food etc and, and I know that uh, you had some differences on some of the uh, what was in the original stimulus for that but uh, what do you think of President Trump's executive orders and what does the relief mean for the American people and when can they expect it? Well, listen, I, I think the president did what he felt like he had to do. I mean, if Congress was serious about this and uh, Madam Pelosi was not playing politics with it, they, she would have kept Congress there and they would have come up with a deal. But instead, they tried to play politics. She played her hand and she lost. And I think this was a brilliant move on behalf of the president, not only politically, but economically, uh, because many of Americans are sitting here seeing that this amount of money, the $600 is going to expire. As you and I talked about last week, Stephanie, I think that did need to come down. The president did that, but he's still doing something and that is certainly more than can be said for congress yeah i think he he met the democrats halfway in a sense and, and they're still upset and they want to challenge it and we'll see where that goes and I, I would argue instead of challenging it why don't they come up with solutions in congress rather than leaving it up to president trump because something had to be done and i think it's a bad look for democrats politically because people at home who are going to receive this relief that they so desperately needed because of everything that's happened in this country through no fault of their own uh, i don't think they're going to take kindly to that uh, now i want to move over to this this is kind of interesting. Uh, because of COVID and working from home, uh, it sounds like and it looks like people are trying to relocate to uh, different parts of the country, if you will, away from big cities. That's right. Yeah, a recent study was done and more and more Americans are, are leaving these more populated areas and moving to uh, more rural areas. Uh, and those states that maybe have lower cost of living and lower taxes, effectively red states. And what we're seeing is that it, this COVID is playing out in two ways. One is with remote working, people don't have to live in the higher urban cost taxed uh, areas that also have a higher propensity of the possibility of getting COVID, but can move to places uh, that have a lower uh, government in involvement in their daily life, lower taxes, better cost of living, all of these. And so it'll be interesting to see if this continues to play out. Yet you have to wonder what's going to happen with a lot of these red states, considering so many people are fleeing blue states. And as somebody was born and raised in Arizona and we've seen uh, the political shift there, you always have to worry about it. It's like, you know, they don't love their policies there and then they bring their politics to a red state. I'm yeah, sure I'm a lifelong Texan. I, I'm a lifelong Texan. We say, you're welcome. We, we Bring your message. Just leave your politics at home. Absolutely. Uh, and I saw Governor Cuomo in New York. He was, like, begging wealthy people to come back to the city. He was, like, offering them drinks and food. It's so outrageous. Well, and, you know, AOC came out today and said there shouldn't be billionaires. And even actually Cuomo came out immediately and said, time out. <laughs> if we get all these billionaires have the ability to leave our city, they can uproot and move quickly. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see the infighting that happens with the Democrats here, recognizing economics still apply. Well, and there was calls for higher taxes on the super wealthy in New York to make up for the projected $30 billion deficit. So I, I have a feeling the wealthy people aren't going to want to move back or stay there. They're going to be taxed to death. Well, that's right. They're going to move to states and areas of our country that uh, they can continue to operate their businesses. Listen, at the end of the day, trickle economics is real. Uh, it is a real thing. And I've never gotten a job from a poor person. We need the wealthy to generate more economic growth and jobs. And that's the way that our economic system works. Uh, what do you make of oil prices going up? And what does that mean for regular Americans? 
Well, I recognize that I'm a Texan making this statement, but America is an oil producing country and the statistics will show that when oil prices are higher, not exorbitant, but higher, America does better. And so, um, you know, the oil and energy sector is, is responsible for the vast majority of our infrastructure growth and capital recapitalization investment, not to mention foreign money that comes into the United States. So we need a strong energy sector to thrive and to generate more, uh, we'll call it fuel into our economy. Yeah, I'm in California right now, and I paid four, almost $4 a gallon for gas the other day. I didn't realize gas prices were, were so high right now, so it's kind of an outrage. But we're going to have to leave it Come to Texas. Here. We're only paying $2 a gallon. <laughs> Must be nice.